guys, welcome back. It is a big day. Jay Z NES here, and we're going to talk about Dragon Quest, one of my favorite RPG series of all time. It's been mentioned on the channel a little bit with some of the spin off games like Swords, and then I talked about Eight, and I talked about Six actually in one of my older uh, what I've been playing videos from a long time ago. It's like a long time ago, I don't know, 2014 or 15 or some shit. I, I don't even remember. Go back and look. Anyways, so the reason we're talking about the series today is because I'm going to be reviewing Dragon Quest Heroes here. You know that game that I said in my backlog video uh, that I was going to finish? Well, I finished it, and here we are reviewing it. And so technically this is kind of part of the backlog videos, but also it's just its own standalone review. So we're going to review this thing. But first I just kind of wanted to talk about my history with Dragon Quest, because Dragon Quest to me is a very important franchise. It's one of the most important franchises to me. Um, as a kid, the, the, one of the very first games I owned and played on my own was Pokemon, and this uh, came with my very first system that I owned. My brother owned a lot of systems, you know, that's what I used to kind of play my games on. But the first system I particularly owned, I talked about it in my uh, Pokemon 25th anniversary video, is Pokemon and my Pokemon Silver um, Game Boy, which I should have pulled out, but I, I, anyway. It's here, you know, this um, this is where it all kind of started for me, it was, was an RPG, you know? I didn't know what an RPG was back then, I thought it was like the, the rocket launcher thing, but no. It's it's this, it's a full playing game, you know, that's what an RPG is. And it, uh, basically, I was looking for more games for my Game Boy Color, because I had just gotten it, it was my first system. And I took a look, and I saw this box, it was a... Uh, at, uh, well, you can see on the sticker there, actually, it says, oh, uh, you can't see it. No, anyways, well, it says Video Games Etc. there. This is one of the local chains that we have around here. And, um, I kind of looked at this box, and I'm like, well, that looks kind of cool. You know, it's fantasy-esque, and I kind of asked the guy, well, what kind of game is it? And he's like, oh, it's an RPG, and he kind of described some of the mechanics to me. And I'm like, wow, that sounds just like Pokemon. And the guy was probably just shaking his head like, oh, my God, kids these days only fucking know Pokemon. But, uh, yeah, so this was my second game I ever had. This was, that was officially, like, uh, like, like, my game that I had for my system was Dragon Quest 1 and 2 here. A great compilation for the Game Boy Color. One of my favorite, ver and this is the best version of this game, in my opinion. Now, um, there were the NES games, which I also have, uh, 1 through 4 here. <laughs> Uh, for the NES, because I'm doing my NES set, and uh, most people have probably played this one, Dragon Quest 1 here, uh, which is known as Dragon Warrior. Um, so, if I mention Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest, that's all the same thing. It's, um, it's what they used to call them in America here, was Dragon Warrior. So most people probably played this version, but if you have played this version, it's a little bit fucking tedious, especially you have to go down the stairs, you gotta press a button for the stairs, you gotta like, go into your menu, stairs, and it's just, oh my god, I played it and I beat it, but guess what? It's fucking tedious. You know what? This shit streamlines it all down. There's a great video on this by uh, HVGN, you gotta go watch it. Uh, compares the two, it'll show you exactly the difference. But this is a great version, plus it comes with Dragon Warrior 2, an infinitely, like, you know, better sequel and whatnot. It's a great game. Highly recommend this, but I started with this. This, is, this was one of the first games I ever owned and played that was my game, you know? And I remember just playing it and, and loving it and beating it, and both of the games, and uh, it took me a long time to beat them, but this was, you know, this was my childhood right now, right here, uh, Dragon Quest, you know? So, um, and then I had the third game, which I don't actually have sitting here, so. so here's the third game, uh, it, it's really good. A uh, funny story about this game is that, uh, not this particular one, the Game Boy Color one, again, I played the Game Boy Color one. Um, don't have that one in box. This is actually the box for my childhood. It has a little sticker on there. It says twenty dollars. Can't believe we bought that for twenty bucks back then. That was a great deal. But um, this here, uh, the Game Boy Color version of this actually is also a great game, but it's much, much, much longer. And um, it took me till high school to beat. I went on and off with it for a long, long time. There's a whole story about that, about how I lost my cartridge on the last. Uh, fucking castle, but I'll talk about it when I get more in-depth with these games, you know? Uh, I am planning to do some reviews on the Dragon Quest series, but Dragon Quest 3 was another one from my childhood, not this uh, NES one, but the Game Boy Color one. And then there was 4, and this came out later when I got my DS, and I absolutely was, I went insane, I'm like, oh my god, they're releasing 4 and all these other ones we never got, because um, the next step in the series actually for me 
was, if I can find it here, <laughs> Dragon Quest VIII. This is my original beat up, like copy in the actual like box thing. Ah, uh, this is a nicer copy I have. Dragon Quest VIII here, which came out in 2005, and we didn't really get like four or five and um, it's six until a little bit later on the DS. And uh, I love this game. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It's like my second favorite RPG to maybe Persona 4. Uh, oh, Golden, of course, but uh, this is a great, great, great game. Oh, it's so beautiful, the world and everything. And uh, I remember getting this back in the day and I was just blown away by it. I sunk hundreds of hours into this game. I replayed it multiple times. I, I've probably got at least over 500 hours into this game. Uh, probably more than that, honestly. I, I don't know, probably tons and tons of hours. I beat the whole thing. I did all the extra content. I love this game. It's so good. The storyline is great. I love it, you know? So if, if you're looking for an entry into the series, this is the place. And they actually uh, remade it for the 3DS, and that might be the more accessible version. Uh, I'm just kind of a stickler. I like playing things on my TV. So that's how I kind of experienced the series up until when they released the um, DS trilogy, which is um, 4 and 5 and 6. And I played these um, in high school here. When, uh, they, when they came out, and I love these games. Six, not so much. I mean, it's. I mentioned a little bit about it in my other video that I talked about. Uh, eh, it's just not as good as the other two. Uh, four and five are absolute fucking classic games. I love them so much. The characters, the stories, the world. Oh my god, they're beautiful. They're amazing. Great fucking games. And then um, it seems kind of weird, but seven actually. Um, I got in the PS1 and I played that a little bit later. That was actually in one of those videos too. That was a more recent years. I played 7. It was kind of the last one that I had to play. And this version, it's really rough. I've talked about it already. Very rough. I mean, there's a lot of little things that they could have fixed and there's a lot of grinding. And you know what? I believe that they did fix them in this version. So if you want to get played 7, the 3DS version is the absolute way to do it. Play this game. It's amazing. It's fun. I love it. But, um... The, the original one it was a great game. I loved it, but it was just so fucking tedious and hard. So I'm sure they fixed that with the 3DS one. It's a really good game. And actually, um, the whole thing was, you know, we're talking about kind of um, spin-off games and whatnot. And then also, uh, I just want to show off that I have all the guides. I got four there. I got five here. I bought these all when they came out back, you know, on the uh, DS is six there. Definitely needed that one. Seven, I got that actually after I played the game, but still a cool guy to have. I got like seven and a few of these other ones for like three bucks each. Like this one, they go for tons online. It's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. Nine here, haven't finished that. Still got to finish that. Oh yeah, got Dragon Quest Nine here. Still got to finish that. Um, Dragon Quest Monsters and oh, I do. Oh, God, I was looking for this. Monsters, um, the original. So I gotta finish that game now that I have the guide. Um, and then the uh, later Monsters Joker guide. And um, that's kind of a nice segue into this game here, Dragon Quest Monsters 2. I didn't play the first one back in the day, but I did play this one. And ironically enough, since I got into Dragon Quest through Pokemon, this is almost, this is like Pokemon Dragon Quest. Like, it's, it's a whole, came full circle, you know? And this is a fucking great game. I love this game. This is so good. I used to play this all the time back in the day. I used to love it. I still love it. I mean, I uh, finished the game more recently. Super fun game. You could uh, control like the Dragon Quest monsters, um, basically as if they were Pokemon. You could have like three of them on your team, I believe, and uh, yeah, and then just like attack and whatnot. And they're just like Pokemon. So um, if anybody's looking for anything like that, that's where you go for that. And then there's two later DS games that are kind of spin-offs, which are similar um, in style, more 3D. Style. I played this one, need to play this one once I beat this one. Uh, that's why they're on the backlog, in the backlog video. Anyway, so those are great. And then, really, so I mentioned Dragon Quest Swords. That's another great fucking spinoff for the Wii. You use, uh, like, the, the waggle controls, right? Like, you think, oh, that's kind of gay. But it, it's really cool. It's like, um, it's like an on-rail shooter, but with, uh, you, you hack and slash and stuff. It's, oh, it's fucking amazing. I love this game. I really recommend it. You don't listen to the critics. I like nobody to like this game or whatever. But um, if you can find it, it's a little bit uncommon, but uh, definitely a fucking great game right here. 
as a spin-off. And then another one that I have to get to is Builders. I have that on my backlog list, kind of a Minecraft sort of thing. I'm really looking forward to that one because it actually takes place in between uh, 1 and 2 here when the world from 1 kind of gets destroyed. That's where you're building it up again. It's pretty cool. We're getting a sequel to this. Uh, and Dragon Quest XI is coming. So that's um, another reason why I wanted to finish some of these uh, spin-off games. And then you might know Fortune Street, which is actually uh, sort of a Mario Party uh, clone game here, you know, or whatnot. And uh, so this is a really fun game as well. Me and my friends love this game. But anyway, so as you can tell, I really love those games. I and mean, you can see my passion for them here. They're part of my childhood. They're big, big franchise to me. I love it. I love that Dragon Quest XI is coming. I flipped out when I heard the news because... It was really iffy. I, uh, Japan has always been, uh, Square Enix of Japan, that is, has always been really reluctant to release these games here because Final Fantasy sells and Dragon Quest does not sell for whatever reason. But it's a great, great fucking underrated series. I say it ten times better than Final Fantasy. You know, uh, fuck some of those Final Fantasy games. 13, you can eat my fucking ass, dick, whatever. Fuck 13. Final Fantasy 13 is a shitty game. And I'll, I'll get to that someday, but... Oh, God, I hate that game so much. But there are some great other Final Fantasy games, but the Dragon Quest series remains consistently awesome to this day. Like, every single entry is great, except for maybe, like, 6 and 9. I had 9 because I can't play it with anybody. That was kind of the intention of that game. But anyways, so let's get on to reviewing Dragon Quest Heroes here. Now, what's so great about Dragon Quest Heroes is that it takes all of those other games, all of the... the a lot of references to them and all of that, and it puts it all into this one game. Now, there's games like, uh, you know, the other spin-offs like Dragon Quest Swords and, like I said, uh, Fortune Street, which are fan service -y games, but this game, as a fan service game, is incredible. And, and it, it goes beyond that, too. It's not just the fan service, it's the entire package here, the, all the gameplay and, and everything else. It's a fucking excellent game. You know, when I initially saw this, when my initial reaction to all of this um, was, you know, kind of mixed. I thought it was kind of a Dynasty Warriors kind of thing, and everything was sort of getting that treatment at the time. And I figured this would be some casual fan service affair, sort of like the Persona spin-offs. Lazily done, not very interesting, but the gameplay would be tight, you know? And it, it rubbed me the wrong way that it wasn't a traditional turn-based RPG, and yet the visuals were pretty breathtaking at the time. I looked at them, and I'm like... Wow, these HD fucking graphics for Dragon Quest. That's what I've wanted, like, forever now. Ever since I saw Dragon Quest X, I've wanted these HD graphics. And they were there, and they looked beautiful. The last fully 3D game we saw was on the PS2 with Dragon Quest VIII. So these vibrant 3D graphics got me really interested. And I figured if any franchise could interest me in the genre of, uh, you know, it's like hack and slash beat em up sort of thing, it would have been Dragon Quest. This was, fittingly enough, also the first PS4 game I popped in to test. I had it day one, and for some reason I didn't play it until I took a serious look at my gaming backlog a few weeks ago. Enough beating around the bush then. How is this game? Well, in short, this game is fucking excellent. Not only did they nail the aesthetics of a vibrant world with unique settings that fit right into the feel of Dragon Quest Universe, but they were also spot on with the characters. See, the gimmick of Heroes is that a lot of the best characters from all of the nine main series games join you from parallel worlds to help you fight a villain called Velasco. Thus, the characters that used to be 16-bit sprites are rendered in stunning 3D models that are completely faithful to every detail of the original Akira Toriyama designs. Not only that, but the voice acting is so perfect and on point that it breathes complete new life into these characters and hits me in all of the fields. I absolutely adore how well the overall aesthetic of the characters, weapons, monsters, and the world naturally feel like the lands of the other Dragon Quest games. All the fucking classic Dragon Quest monsters are here too, and it's absolutely incredible to fight some of them as bosses in this game. Graphics aren't everything though, story is important. While I'd argue a Dragon Quest story outside of parts maybe 5 and 8 are usually just to fill in some lore and make the world feel more vibrant, here it serves its purpose well enough. Not to say that it's anything mind-blowing, it's a pretty simple plot as they come. What really keeps it together though is the characters. There's so much in just seeing these characters like Yangus of Dragon Quest VIII, 
being such a softy to Helix, the main Kierslein character, while Jessica bickers at him, like just like in the original game. The, the characters really represent the ones from the game, but add new layers to them if you've played the original source material. I got a whole new appreciation for the characters like Elena and Kirkle of Dragon Quest IV, and they became my mainstay party. Then there's old favorites like Nira and Bianca, who are the lovely waifu brides of Dragon Quest V. Even the original cast is badass. You could choose to play as Aurora or Lucius. I chose Aurora, and I, and I gotta say, she was a great lead to interact with the feelings and the plights and the strengths of the party. When she first gets introduced to Elena, for instance, she looks up to her, how much power she possesses, and essentially striving to get on her level. They're essentially both knights protecting the king of Arbra, Doric, who's also a badass. His kingdom that protects the world tree is being overrun by previously friendly monsters, and now the heroes must put an end to the evil that has corrupted them. Some of the flavor text is a bit much, but the voice acted dialogue is generally awesome. Overall, the characters are a fun group, and are hilarious, emotional, and are a strong cast that add life to the game in a great way. Not only that, but each character serves their, their own style and gameplay as well. There are a few different groups, and everyone fits into one. The swordsmen, including Aurora, Lucius, and Terry, and the secret character, Sorrow. This style is your typical sort of close-range, hit-hard combat, with very visceral slashes that feels very satisfying. And then there's the variants of this, like Yangus and his axe, who has a bit more range and power, as well as Jessica, whose whip is a sort of longer-ranged version of the swords. Maya has the spinning top style with her fans, which is pretty cool, too. Elena was a favorite of mine with her fast-punching damage style. Kirkle and Doric have sort of similar styles as they use spears to stab enemies. Lastly, there's the ranged attackers such as Nira, Bianca, and Isla. Bianca is an archer, Nira is a magic user, and Isla uses boomerangs. The gameplay boils down to beating the shit out of all of the monsters, which is completely satisfying. There's a few mechanics to make this extra awesome, such as monster coins that drop that let you summon the monsters to fight with you, and the tension gauge that lets you go invincible and perform a sick screen clearing attack. Well, amazing. The ones like Aurora's Giga Slash, Maya's turning into the dragon and scorching everything in her path, Nira's magical girl sequence, Elena's giant fireball, or the most hilarious one, Kirkle's attempt to use Thwack. Thwack! Whack! 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 The customization in terms of your party is a key factor as well. You choose three additional members for every battle, and while varying it up isn't essential to finishing the game, I see this as a good thing. You have the freedom to experiment and see which team suits you best. Late game quests require certain members, and I found this really made me love the characters I wouldn't have used otherwise, like Yangus, Jessica, and Maya. Switching between your party and the heat of battle is another cool mechanic. There's a lot of customization here as well. There's armor, weapons, and accessories to buy, a skill tree to up your stats, quests for special items, the alchemy pot to fuse new items, mini medals, achievements, the works. There's certainly no lack of content here. I put in a full 74 hours to complete all the quests, grinding, and the story. Not to mention there's a ton of DLC and post-game content once you finish the main story. I could definitely see this being a comfort food game down the line. There's only a handful of minor problems I hold. The music is great and they even have all the classic jingles for leveling up and whatnot, but I would have loved to hear some more variety and original pieces to really liven up the experience and make it unique. Also, there's a lot of defend a person missions, which are handled excellently, but the ones where the idiots move around are infuriating due to my monsters not always being able to follow them. Other than those moments, though, everything was incredible. There's just one major caveat to all of that. You may have noticed that I'm speaking as a fan who knows all of the details of the monsters and the characters and the music, etc. Well, that's because this is a fan service game, made oh so lovingly for us Dragon Quest fans. Now, to be fair, I'm sure that people can enjoy the gameplay alone and appreciate how hella sick the aesthetic is. 
But to get the full scope of this game, it's recommended you've experienced these characters in some other games before this one. That being said, maybe this is more your cup of tea gameplay-wise, and it would be a good jumping off point for the Dragon Quest series. It's hard to say from my perspective since I started with the RPG game. Playing Dragon Quest Heroes has reinvigorated my love and passion for this highly underrated series. I think it's one of the few examples of fan service done with a purpose. It doesn't feel cheaply done. It, it doesn't feel cheaply done. It feels organic, passionate. And Square could have handed off the rights to the franchise to anybody, and they could have made a mediocre beat em up, but they didn't. They made sure Koei crafted a loving masterpiece to their franchise. They absolutely nailed the aesthetic, the feel of the world, the characters, the monsters, and the flair of the series. They made the gameplay represent the history of the series perfectly while, while taking it in a brilliant new direction and reinventing it as well. They made the characters work as a whole and feel strong as a group of friends by the end. When they all showcase their unique attacks and attempt to kill the final boss, it just hit me with a wave of emotion. I think that there's something to be said about how well this was adapted and how, how the fan service felt natural and not pandering. It's been an extremely fun and satisfying ride, and I'm proud to award Dragon Quest Heroes a 9.4 out of 10. So anyways guys, I just wanted to share my passion for the Dragon Quest series with you, as it's one of my favorite series of all time, and I just uh, wanted to really review Dragon Quest Heroes here since I finished it and got it off my backlog. Um, it's a great game, it's very um, good for fans of the series, uh, very excellent. If you're a fan of the series, you gotta play this game. I highly recommend it. What the fuck? There's a slime on my head! <laughs> this has been Jay-Z NES saying, keep it classic and stick around for more reviews and underrated games. I'll see you next time. Jay-Z?